Hi, Rich. Just a little explanation. I did get Mengu to take a few minutes and do a video for you. But as you know, it's too noisy in the studio to even do the counting or explain what's going on. So we did the corner figure, went into promenade into the fallaway whisk, and then we did two versions of it. We came out of the fallaway whisk, turned around in front of the girl to go through the corte line into the stop lock. And then we did it the way more advanced dancers would usually do it, which is to put a pivot in between. So from the fallaway whisk, there's a pivot, and then you wrap around the lady into the moving corte line and the stop lock. You have one slow at the beginning of the group, and then all the way through the fallaway whisk. And if the pivot, whatever we do there, those are all quicks. And then when you do the stop lock, that will be the quick and quick hold on the slow, and then when you cross your foot, that's an and quick, quick and. I think you're pretty clear on that, uh, but I'm not able to count that in the studio. So I'll just put this little explanation in front of the videos and I'll give you a couple uh, versions to look at. I'm also going to go over your dance map. So the when you had it, you put your walls just in a rectangle. But when we make the map, it's a good idea to actually put the diagonals. When you're going to do your fall away, you're going to move into diagonal center. You're not going to take that along the wall. When we do the double chase, we're going into and around the corner. When we do the fall away whisk, we're headed into the corner and coming out. And the stop block will be back in diagonal center. So just to give you a better idea of the actual map, and plan for the floor. So instead of you just writing the steps along the edges, start imagining how they're going to go on the floor. And I think it's a great exercise that you're doing that on your own. You just need a little guidance about how it actually is laid out on the floor, how, you, how you'd actually dance it. So I'll put that at the end of this video. <laughs> started your grouping here rich in black so the first trip around the floor is in black and then I went into the red on the second time so we're starting the the walk so we normally would do them diagonal wall into a link to do some of our other groupings when we were doing syllabus work but since we want to do a figure in the center we're going to take the walks from the line of dance to diagonal center and that will be your turning five step now that comes out in promenade and your direction will be diagonal wall. You'll actually be facing wall in order to move diagonal wall. Remember in tango, your promenades are moving an eighth of a turn to the left of where your feet are pointing. So that promenade, you move in front of the lady into the back check. So now you're closer to the wall and there's your over sway. And let's see, you finished your oversway, I think, with a promenade tap and an open promenade with an outside swivel. Okay, so hopefully you can, you, you have your list there also. And I believe this is an outside swivel turning left slightly, and then you did the lock. I think what you did here was just a lock with a promenade close. This is the part we need to go over because I wasn't sure where you put the quarter beats in. Right, the quarter beats would normally be done when you're in promenade, so we'll talk about that. But then you did use the four step in the corner. That ends in promenade. We did a back open promenade to a four step change. The four step change ends in closed position, so you need the progressive link. And I just made two little feet there. 
And then we use the fall away whisk into the corner. Now this is the group that I had Mengu demonstrate. That takes us around out of the corner and the stop lock is coming back on the diagonal. You're backing diagonal center. That moves into the Viennese crosses and you can see again we're not hugging the wall. We're coming down close to the center of the floor. You have your oversway and your drag and everything that happens there. And then you can see here where the chase, the double chase takes you into and around the corner ending with the chasse and progressive link. Now I'll have to check your alignments on this to see if you are able to get the progressive link in the right alignment because we should finish diagonal wall, the short wall, in order to do the twist turn. And I think in the space you have there, I don't think you need anything else on that short wall. The twist turn ends in promenade, so now we're going to the red. This is the next trip, and we're doing the closed promenade. I think on your map you may not have put the two walks in here. I think you went right into the the uh, quick lock into promenade, but you need to get into promenade first. So the closed promenade ends in closed and then take the two walks towards the line of dance. I put the two little feet again for progressive link. So now if our feet are facing the, the line of dance, the long line of dance, you'll be able to move into promenade for your quick promenade lock. Some people call it a stop, uh, pick up lock, quick lock, quick close, side lock. And then you do your fall away reverse and slip pivot. Now you can see on the second trip on the red line that you're actually going down closer to the center of the room again. And then you carry on with your reverse turn and outside swivel and uh, whatever we did at the end of that group. So if we step back from it, then you can see the interesting diagonal patterns and compare that to the map that you made where your all your figures were lined along the wall. And so it was, yours was a little bit more of a list of what goes on each line, but this is your actual floor pattern. So I think it would be a good idea maybe look at this and then see if you can do this on your own. It would be a, a really good exercise in floor craft.